Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. Just trying to give you guys a quick reef update. Now, if you follow my channel, you're well aware the last few weeks I've had a few changes to the tank. You know, whether it be the calcum dosing or more recently, the dwarf angelfish I've added to the tank. So we're gonna kind of follow up on that, a few of the corals and just get a good look at the tank. So let's go ahead and get to it. So when it comes to having multiple dwarf angelfish in my tank, it really boils down to two questions, at least for me. The first one being, you know, will they get along? Are they gonna just kill each other or, you know, chase each other to the point to where it causes an ick outbreak, you know, stressful situation in my tank? Or the second question, the more important in my opinion, will they eat my corals? You know, when it comes to the cost of corals versus fish in my system, the corals are definitely winning 10 to one, would be my best guess. So it's very important for me to figure out. So I've really been observing these fish over the last couple of weeks. We're gonna talk a little bit about both and hopefully, you know, also help anyone try to make that decision. So let's start off with the new guy. It's gonna be my multicolor angelfish. Been in the tank roughly two weeks or so. So, you know, this relationship is still new. And I say that because observing your fish is the best way to learn their eating habits, their normal behaviors as far as, you know, the territories and the hierarchy in the tank as far as which fish is gonna be dominant. You can't know those things without watching your tank. So it takes time. You can't just jump to conclusions off, you know, the first couple of days. But what I have noticed over the last few weeks is he does not touch corals. That's definitely a biggie. And as far as crazy aggression, he's only chased the flame angel here and there. Nothing like I want to kill you, more like get out of my face right now. I'm kind of annoyed. And the flame angel just kind of gets out of the way. So no big deal there. Now, when it comes to my flame angel, it's been in the tank for roughly a year, maybe a little longer at this point. This is cool as it gets. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys. He's went through two different multi-bar angels, a midnight angel, and a coral beauty. Never had an issue with any of those fish, including the multicolor angel I have in there now. So territorial wise, definitely no issues there and no issues with him eating coral. So prime example of, you know, never judge a fish by what you read. You gotta judge each fish on its own merit. And this guy deserves to stay in the tank. No plans on getting rid of him ever. Now, when it comes to feeding my tank, I really try to keep things as simple as possible. You know, that's kind of the theme of my system. You know, not much equipment, not much dosing, not much anything, just letting it mature and trying to have an easy to keep reef tank. Now, with that being said, I really got to be careful of how much I feed my tank as well. You know, there's kind of two trains of thought in this hobby. The first one being set your tank up to where you can, you know, have as much filtration as possible, tons of equipment, you know, dose for everything you don't want, whether it be nitrates, no pox, sugar, vodka, bio pellets, whatever the case may be to where you are manipulating your tank's nutrients by media or filtration. Now, if you do it that way, you are allowed to feed however much food you want, you know, have big, fat, plump, happy fish, no issues at all with your water quality. Now, that's all good, but unfortunately, I don't have that freedom in my system. You know, I have the bare minimum when it comes to filtration, just live rock, Seacamp's pond matrix, carbon, a skimmer, and an algae scrubber. That's it. So really, really uh, a small amount of filtration in my tank. And that really dictates how much I can feed my tank. So I guess a word of advice I would say for anyone new, if you're, when you're setting up your feeding schedule, make sure that your filtration, your biological filtration, all of that can handle what you want to feed and adjust your stock list and how much you feed accordingly. That's something that uh, I'm definitely doing on my system. And that's the reason I only feed that much. Now, one of the main reasons I mentioned that is when it comes to adding a new fish like the multicolor angel, I have to account for its particular taste. He's not really pellet friendly at the moment, but I know he eats the frozen food because I watched him eat it at the LFS. So I basically have to feed a little more frozen to make sure this guy's plump and happy. And as he slowly acclimates to the pellets, which he is, you know, it's, it's kind of a texture thing at this point. But once he eventually is eating pellets like everyone else, I can start backing off the frozen food. So I just want to kind of throw it out there because all of it goes hand in hand. When you add a new fish, you also have to factor that into your feeding regimen and how much it's going to affect your tank. You know, you want to add a new fish and have your nitrates go through the roof because of overfeeding. So it's kind of a food for thought for anyone new. So what's my final thoughts on this multicolor angel fish in my tank? Honestly, guys, after two weeks, I'm feeling really optimistic about this fish. You know, he's eating well. He's starting to transition to pellets. He's getting along with my flame angel. And more importantly, 
He's not touching core, or at least hasn't shown any interest that I've witnessed. So all of those signs are pointing to, you know, him being a permanent resident in the reef tank. It definitely adds a, you know, a, a unique color to the tank with it being white and purple and yellow and blue and black. I mean, it's tons of color on that fish, tons of personality. And it almost makes me want to push the limit just a little further. I know you guys are thinking, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about a dwarf angel trio in the tank. So I'll give you guys more details on that soon. But it is something I'm seriously, seriously considering. But I got to just wait a little bit longer to make sure this is working out first. Now, let me take a moment and kind of share a few cores with you guys that I really don't talk about very often. And honestly, I should because they're very important to my tank as far as the scape. And without them, I don't think my tank will look the same. Specifically, this leather core. I had this guy to the system maybe seven months or so ago. Three inch frag, didn't really have big plans for him. Just wanted to see what would happen. And look at this. I mean, I got a full six to eight inch leather tree, if you want to call it that, growing up to the waterline and completely filling out the right side of my skate. Now, besides a leather core, I would say the second most important or easy to keep core on my system can be the GSP. Started off with a dime sized frag on this rock, completely covered the whole scape. And not only that, it's starting to branch out and each branch creates another layer of you know, definition and texture to this rock I didn't plan on and I definitely don't think my tank would be the same without it. So, uh, you know, I can't recommend enough these cores for anyone that's new in the hobby. Something cheap, easy to grow that can add a lot to your skate. Now, everything doesn't always go as planned in my system. You know, when it comes to this red Satosa coral, waited months for this thing to become available in my LFS. Got a piece, added it to the system, had great hopes and dreams for it, only to have it start dying from the bottom up. Now, I can't put my finger on if it's the Hollywood Sterner Chalice stinging this coral from the bottom, killing it, or if I have some of the uh, tissue necrosis. A lot of the SPS guys know exactly what that is, the RTN, STN, killing this frag. So my plan is cut off the pieces that are still alive and red, try to start reseeding them in the tank, and see if I can at least save some frag of this coral, because I really want this section full of Satosa coral, but if it's not in the plans, you know, it's not in the plans. So I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully keep the flame hawk fish from perching on this core because I'm sure it doesn't like that either. So let's move on to problem number two. It's gonna be my frog spine. Now you guys know I love euphilias in my tank and the plan was to have this whole right side completely filled with, you know, fully expanded frog spine. For the most part, I've accomplished that, except for this one head. Really looking in distress, can't tell what exactly is causing this. Have the same assumption as the Satosa coral could potentially be the Hollywood Center Chalice's sweepers, you know, attacking it at night. So I'm going to definitely try to catch that in the act to see if that's what's causing it. And I'm also keeping an eye on the Flame Angel and the Multicolor Angel to make sure they're not sneaking nips at it either. So, you know, stay tuned on this. I'll try to find the culprit. If, if it is the Hollywood Center Chalice Cool, I will be fragging that thing back a little bit further to make sure I save my Euphilius. Now, in the spirit of, you know, sharing corals and things with you guys I never really talk about very often, the left side of the tank is a view that you never see very often. So definitely want to take a second and kind of share with you guys how it looks from this side. As you can tell, SPS are definitely thriving on this side of the tank. It gets the main flow from the gyre hitting that wall. So tons of flow, getting nice lighting in that area, and they're really growing well. Now this is going to be a prime example of adding cores to your tank to a side you don't see and kind of forgetting about them. You know, this media shower coral started off maybe a dime sized piece, but it's quietly been encrusting the rock work on this side. It's doing really well. And the Duncan coral as well. You know, it was maybe a one head frag. I think it has three heads on it now. So, you know, definitely a, a good sign where you can put corals in random places and still have them do well. But I got to do some more arranging because things are touching each other that shouldn't. And it's definitely going to be trouble. So when will I be done adding corals to my tank? Well, honestly, guys, when every piece of exposed rock work is covered, you know, I'm looking for anything that can fill in those spaces, pallies, zoanthids, encrusting monopores, uh, you know, chalice corals, anything that's going to fill in those spaces without compromising my scape. That's pretty much what I'm aiming for. So more to come and I'll keep you guys updated. Now, having a fully stocked reef tank, you know, full of corals, full of fish, you know, full of life is definitely enjoyable to watch. And it's definitely something that, you know, I don't take for granted. I, I love looking at my reef tank 
and you know watching it grow and mature watching all the life from the hermit crabs the snails you know the shrimp the corals the fish everything i just like every level of this hobby but with that being said and i can't stress enough this hobby is easy to get into but it's hard to survive in and hard to maintain and that's kind of where i'm at now i'm at the level of wanting to maintain my tank and that's where we're going to talk about the ways i'm doing it and what i've found out so far so i'm gonna do a quick recap for anyone that's new this is a 45 gallon jbj tank roughly a year and a half oh a little bit more than a year and a half maybe 30 gallons of water is actually in the tank after displacement so kind of keep those numbers in mind when we talk about this because when i first started this tank i didn't have as many corals i can maintain it with just one water change every couple of weeks eventually that changed to one every week and eventually it climbed to two a week and then even to three a week to keep up with the alkalinity calcium everything the tank was using as i added more corals i just couldn't keep up with it and then i eventually got to the point to where keeping up with it also caused a problem with my tank becoming too clean as in not enough nutrients left over not enough nitrates left over for my corals to live and you know grow the right way so let's fast forward back to today you know over that time i found that my tank used 0.5 to 0.7 dkh per day you know after testing it every other day with my hana alkalinity checker i found that number to be pretty pretty constant over a week's time or two weeks time it just pretty much is my tank's usage for the moment now what that means is without dosing or without a water change my tank will literally go from 90 kh to crashing within a week's time if i didn't do anything about it so i had a choice did i want to dose two par cal you know alkalinity by itself what did i want to use so I ended up going with Calquasa. You know, not only was it gonna supplement my alkalinity, but it also was gonna help my calcium. So two birds with one stone, anything to make it easy in this hobby is a, you know, is a great thing to do. So I started off slowly, uh, roughly three and a half weeks ago, used the half strength solution, checked it for a week, and I found my usage dropped from 0.7 to around 0.3 DKH per day. So I knew I was on the right track. All I had to do was just bump it up just a smidgen more and that pretty much took care of it. So I'm almost at full strength as far as uh, calc solution. And it keeps my alkalinity steady at 8.9 or 9 dKH. Hasn't moved since. So not only is my alkalinity stable, but my calcium is stable as well. It's setting at around 440 at the moment. I just checked it tonight. And it really hasn't budged much over the last few weeks either. So it brings us to the last number that's really important as far as corals. It's going to be your magnesium. So over the last couple of weeks, I've checked my magnesium and I've watched it drop from 1450 to around 1340 over a two weeks time. Now, from what I've researched and what I understand, as long as your magnesium is roughly three times the amount of calcium you have as far as your readings, you're pretty much on par with where you should be. But when it comes to, you know, supplementing it, that's kind of where I'm on the crosswords at this point. So my plan is, at least for moving forward, is to supplement my magnesium through water changes. You know, sticking with one water change a week, because that's gonna help me stay involved in my tank, stay on top of my maintenance, you know, getting the tritus out, siphoning out my sump area. You know, I still need to do those things to maintain, you know, good water quality as far as being clean and just not too many nutrients in my tank. But I believe, I think I'll be okay. Uh, the reef crystals I use, the magnesium out of the bucket is close to 1480. So that in itself will help to add magnesium to my tank and to help balance out the parameter. So that's the plan moving forward. Got the alkalinity and calcium straightened away. Gonna use water change to maintain magnesium. And if that's not enough, then I'll start thinking about, you know, adding magnesium manually. But for now, I just don't see the need for it. So overall, really satisfied with the plan, especially how it's working out. Now, one huge benefit I've noticed over the last few weeks is the growth of my tank. I mean, that's one thing to see growth every, you know, couple of weeks. But it's a whole nother thing to watch growth happen every other day. And I'm talking specifically about the coralline algae and the SPS corals in my system. You know, the coralline is growing all along the bottom of the glass, all along the sand bed, which is really hard to get to, but it's growing crazy all over the tank. So definitely a sign of stability. And the SPS are sprouting new branches that I can actually watch grow every other day. So 
it's definitely signs that uh, I'm on the right track. I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, this next step in the hobby, learning how to maintain a stable reef tank and learning how to actually grow corals and not just keep them alive, but to have them flourish and, you know, get to the point to where you have to frag them and, you know, make room for them. You know, overall, the tank's not perfect, but, you know, nothing ever goes perfect in this hobby. But I am growing and I am ready for that next step of, you know, creating a stable reef environment. I think that's going to be the next direction to go for me. But I'm going to cut this vid here. You know, I've been rambling on long enough. So thank you if you made it this far. And then also I want to mention to anyone that does not know, I actually do have t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs available. It's called the Be Easy Collection. I am actually uh, have those available in a link down below in the description. So if you're interested, definitely check them out. And other than that, and I think I'm going to cut it here, guys. So as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You all do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.